On June 5th, 2023, Ichiro Oda released One Piece Chapter 1085. This is a chapter where we not only learn that the Nefertari family is a part of the D-Clan, but we also view the animalistic forms that the Gorosei apparently have. This is cool and all, but let's rewind to six years in the past. On March 13th, 2017, Oda also delivered to us Chapter 858. This is where Oda showed us an absolutely glorious shot of Nami, but also the deep lore that is between Lola and Prince of Elbaf, Loki. What I want to focus on specifically though, is the cover to this six year old chapter. This is what it looks like, and this is how Oda loves to do his foreshadowing. If you read closely, there's two American football teams duking it out. The Bisons with a five pointed star behind it, and the Monkeys with a flame behind it. What's most intriguing though, is that the leading player of the Bison team has the same exact eye scar as Saint Saturn, and he is butting heads with none other than Luffy, who is known for his flame powers as the Monkey Sun God. Looking even closer though, we can see that all of the players on the field have numbered jerseys. Luffy, for an example, has 55 since his birth birthday is May 5th. Zoro's another example because his birthday is November 1st, connecting to his jersey number 11. The leading player to this Bison's team has the jersey number of 66. Can you guess why though? The five pointed star I mentioned earlier is a hint to the true nature of this Bison, the five elder stars. But more importantly, the jersey number being 66 is a connection to the sixth planet from the sun, Saturn. We are about to dive a hundred times deeper than that though, so make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to never miss the sickest One Piece theory videos on all of YouTube. A lot of the facts and details behind this theory today is going to derive from the chapter cover of 858. This is an absolute gold mine and there's so many tiny, small, minute details that everyone's looking over. But you guys can count on me to pull out and find all the details regarding the foreshadowing of chapter 858's cover. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this all around Twitter, Instagram, maybe even YouTube, all sorts of social medias, how the bison shares the same eye scar as Saturn. I originally put this on Twitter before pretty much anyone and it was recycled into oblivion. This happens all the time. I'm not complaining. I'm just defending myself. This is not recycled content. This is not a recycled theory. I was the source. Now that we have all that out of the way, let's talk about the actual theory itself and all the details behind it. So again, this is taking place on a football field, an American football field, and there's two different teams going head to head, the Bisons and the Monkeys. Now I find it very funny how this isn't a basketball game. It's not a soccer ball game. It's an American football game. And what do they play over. What is the main objective in American football? To score a touchdown, to earn points by bringing the football, which looks like an egg, to an end zone. Now, I think it's very intentional that Oda chose American football, being that the football is based off of the shape of an egg. It used to be more spherical in the far, far past, but over time, they changed the shape of the American football to match that of an egg. And this is totally intentional because Luffy is where right now in the story? Egghead Island. And we know that this is the first time the Gorosei have ever stepped outside of Marishwa, at least to our knowledge going to Egghead Island. So we could connect the American football being in the shape of an egg to how Luffy and Saturn are about to fight over the Egghead man himself, Vegapunk, but also more specifically Egghead Island. You have to do a lot of reading in between the lines when it comes to Oda and One Piece because he is very sneaky, he's snarky, and he can be very silly. I make this example all the time. We saw during the Zoark, Frankie had a Hito shirt. A lot of people overlooked this. They didn't care, which makes sense. It just seems like a regular shirt until you notice how it says Hito with the O being the sun. This is clearly foreshadowing. This is a clear connection to how Luffy was later on revealed to have the Hito Hito no Mi model sun god Nika. Again, Oda likes to do these really silly ways of foreshadowing that you can only pick up by noticing this and by taking deep dives into the story. Again, you could trust on me to do it for you. So yeah, it comes full circle. They're playing American football specifically, not soccer or basketball because it's over an egg. And this is going to connect to how Luffy's going to butt heads with Saturn on Egghead Island and they're going to duke it out and fight over Egghead Island. Now, the next point that's pretty obvious is that this Bison is the leader of the team going against Luffy, who's a leader of his team. But more specifically, this Bison, who's the leader charging the front, charging the team, has the same kind of eye scar as Saturn. And we know that the other Godesi members, they do have birthmarks of their own. One has a sword, one has scars. They all have these signs and they all have telling details that kind of give away who they are. So when you look at this cover and you think about how Oda's already foreshadowed things in the past, think about how he foreshadowed Nomonosuke in the Wano arc with other covers, it's safe to assume that Oda's gonna do this repeatedly. Use the covers to foreshadow things that happen in the far, far future, sometimes even hundreds of chapters in advance. So when we think back to chapter 1085, which is only a little bit over a month ago, we see that the Gorosei have animalistic forms. This leads a lot of One Piece fans, including myself, to believe that the Gorosei are going to have mythical Zoans because they have a lot of options and a lot of weapons in their arsenal. If you think about Kaido, he had the Suryu Dragon, a mythical Zoan. He still had the power of fire, electricity, 
electricity, wind. He had all these sorts of elements. So even if the Gorose go down the route of having mythical Zoans, I don't think it's going to be flat and boring to where they have high durability and high endurance and recovery speed. I think they're going to have power over other elements similar to Kaido. So again, looking at the Saturn silhouette from chapter 1085 and seeing the horns, I wouldn't put it past Oda to have this character Saint Saturn correlate with this bison who has the same exact scar headbutting Luffy. You can see that the face is wide. All of the other ones seem to be animalistic. It seems like Oda's going to use this cover to foreshadow the Egghead Island arc. And what further backs this up is the scoreboard. I find it very interesting how on the right we have the monkey team, which has a fire behind it. Why wasn't it water or electricity? It's clearly because Luffy was sun god Nika. He's a form of the dawn. He is a form of a sun god. So being that they put the bisons on the left with a five pointed star behind it instead of a circle, square, triangle, rectangle, whatever, it's a form of foreshadowing. This is how Oda likes to write his story. Maybe if I had my own manga, I wouldn't foreshadow this way. Maybe you would foreshadow and think completely different from Oda, but we're basing this off of Oda's beliefs. We're basing this off Oda's logic. We see the way Oda foreshadows throughout the story time and time again, and it could be very unorthodox. You could even compare this to situations like Punk Hazard. Originally, when we were going to that island, we thought it was completely made of fire, lava. We thought it was just a fucking volcano of an island. But how did the Oda foreshadow the other half of the island being cold? How did he give us hints that there was going to be a half ice island? By Nami's dialogue. She had an offhand comment saying, oh, it looks pretty cold on the other side. There's some snowy clouds, some crystal clouds on the other side of the island. This is how Oda foreshadows his story. You got to pick up on these things to get the bigger picture. When you notice and you reread through the story and see all those times where the foreshadowings and the patterns and all the hints come to a conclusion, you start to get the gist. You start to understand how Oda foreshadows. So again, when you think about how the monkey side of the scoreboard has a flame behind it, resembling Sun God Nika, you also have to take into consideration how the bison side has a star, a five-pointed star. This is obviously connected to the Gorose, which in Japanese is five elder stars or the five elder planets. Either way, we as fans call this stars for the very longest time. Planets in such a way are stars. It is what it is. But this is Oda's way of foreshadowing the bison's at least going to be one of the Gorosei members. And just to refresh your mind, it is the bison's against the monkeys. Now you could take this in one of two different ways. Either option A, this is because the bison's, which is Saturn, is going against Luffy, which would be monkey. This would make a lot of sense because they are the straw hat pirates led by monkey D. Luffy. So all throughout the story, Luffy's going to have all these correlations to monkey just with it being in his family name. It makes a lot of sense for Oda to take this approach. But you could also take another approach when you think of who? Admiral Kazaru. When you write that name down and you look at the phrase Kazaru, this is actually a Japanese phrase. Ki meaning yellow, Zaru meaning monkey. So Borsalino, aka Kazaru's true epithet is yellow monkey. And again, comparing this to the scoreboard, we know it says the bisons and the monkeys. So maybe it's that way. Maybe Oda threw a monkey, you know, for Luffy, or maybe he threw a monkey for Kazaru. Being that we know that Kazaru is traveling with Saturn in the first place to Egghead Island. So it's pretty safe to say that Kazaru is going to throw hands. He's going to have some kind of fight. A lot of One Piece fans would even argue he's going to show his awakening on Egghead Island. But either way, even when you look at Kazaru, he still relates to the cover page. He still relates to the cover art. Now, I'm not necessarily arguing that Kazaru being on the scoreboard as a monkey would mean that he goes against Gorosei Saturn. I would actually disagree with that. But again, this is some kind of way that Oda can like foreshadow the Egghead Island arc, foreshadow the events by having Saturn and Kazaru show up to the island together. And earlier, you guys remember how I mentioned all the jersey numbers for these American football teams? We have 5-5 five five because Luffy's birthday is May 5th. And you could do this for pretty much all of the Straw Hats. You can see that their jersey numbers have some kind of connection to the lore of their character. But let's focus on to the leading player, the actual bison with the same exact eye scar as Saturn. His jersey number is 66, which could relate to a month, maybe even Saturn's birthday, although it's unknown. But one simple connection we can make is the connection to the planets and the sun. Looking at our solar system in the Milky Way where we live, we know that Saturn is the sixth planet from the sun. Comparing this to the cover art, the cover page of chapter 858, where the monkeys are going against the bisons, I think this is a very cool connection, especially when you couple that with the eye scar that the bison and Saturn share. I believe this is again Oda's way of foreshadowing. He loves to throw these really cool interesting clues in and if Saturn is ever revealed to be some form of a bison, I guarantee you this is going to be one of the clues that Oda threw in for the story. But we could go even deeper. We could take a deeper dive when it comes to this number 66 jersey. Again, I'm arguing that a 66 is because Saturn is the sixth closest planet to the sun. But there's another event that took place on 66, which is D-Day. This was a huge event for 
America, which a lot of people would compare to Egghead Island, being that there's a character named York there, similar to New York, the city. Then you also have all the technology. You see all the Game Boys and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people have already been connecting Egghead Island to America. And then again, obviously, they're playing American football in the first place. So when you take a look at D-Day and see all the destruction and everything that happened in real life, and you compare it to Egghead Island, it does seem like it's in similar vein. We know that Egghead Island was used to research about the void century through Poneglyphs, all that kind of taboo research Stella mentioned. It's safe to say that they're going to try to kill Stella over this because they admitted it, but more specifically, they're going to blow this island up. They're probably going to take some of the technologies, you know, for their own use, their own good. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think there's going to be a total destruction. It's going to be a total chaotic event that takes place on Egghead Island, which would support things that we already know to be true. Apparently, there's going to be a newspaper and some kind of widespread event that shakes the world once this is all over, apparently in the next day in the One Piece world. And again, how cool would it be to relate this to real life? D-Day. We already know through One Piece, Oda always takes these events in the story, these characters in the story, and compares it to stuff in our real world. This is probably to make this story a little bit more interesting, have fans do some research and do some foreshadowing. But I believe Oda also wants the fans to, you know, do actual research and learn more about the world we live in. So when we circle this all back and we look at how all the jersey numbers to the Straw Hats relate to their birthdays, and we think about how the leading player of the Bison's team has 66, it is likely that it's going to relate to the sixth closest planet to the sun, Saturn. But there's also a huge chance that the 66 relates to D-Day, the event of Egghead Island, the first time we've ever seen the Godese even leave Marijua. This is a huge event, and it looks like he's going to go against Luffy to fight over an egg, maybe an egg-headed person or Egghead Island. At this point, everything in your mind should be connecting, and it should become crystal clear what Oda is doing here. And again, there's all sorts of details all around this cover art. We could really go on forever. But another detail I'll throw in is the swirls on the bison's arms. Why does this matter? Why am I pointing this out? Devil fruits. Again, think back to chapter 1085. We saw all of the Godase have some form of an animalistic form. I think the very safe assumption, the most likely conclusion, the Occam's razor option of this is that they have mythical Zoan devil fruits, the best form of Zoan devil fruits. So if you take that route and if you want to go down that road, then Saturn most likely has some form of a bison mythical Zoan. It could be a Minotaur. It could be some god from Hinduism. There's all sorts of routes that you can take. But being that there's swirls on this bison's arm and being that Oda is alluding to the idea of the Godese having mythical Zoans, this is yet again another foreshadowing technique done by Ichiro Oda. Draw the swirls and imply that this is going to be a character that has a bison devil fruit. And again, not a regular bison, some form of a legendary mythical exotic bison. And I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Just look at the scope of One Piece. Kaido, strongest creature alive, one of the strongest Yonko in the entire story. He was great and trained in hockey. He was proficient in hockey, but he also had a mythical Zoan. And you could compare this to Luffy, who was also very skilled at hockey. But guess what? He has a mythical Zoan. So it seems to be a trend here. Oda wants to create some of the strongest characters in One Piece by having them be proficient in hockey while simultaneously having a devil fruit. Oda is clearly not the type of writer. He doesn't have the mind to believe that having a devil fruit removes skill and removes credibility when it comes to overall strength. No, you can be proficient in hockey. You could be strong and skilled in hockey and have that symbolic willpower while still simultaneously having a devil fruit. So when we think about the admirals who are apparently the strongest members of the Navy, as stated in Long Ring Long Land, it makes a lot of sense that they would have future sight. It makes a lot of sense that they would be proficient in hockey. And it also makes a lot of sense that they would have devil fruits. So now when you compare this to the world government and the Gorosei, the people who lead the entire planet of One Piece, it makes a lot of sense that they would have devil fruits. And it also would make a lot of sense that they would still be proficient in hockey. So now let me ask you, look deep down within yourself. Chapter 1085, we saw these animalistic silhouettes. Why did Oda do it? Are they going to have devil fruits? Are they going to have mythical Zoans? And if so, what does Saturn have?